going on guys so this is video two of ten in the free high ticket e-commerce mini course um, we're going to quickly review what we covered in the last lesson um, and then we'll get right into it so uh, going to give you tons and tons of free value here the only ask i have is if you could please like the video and please subscribe below it'll help the youtube algorithm push my content and help me share it with more people so I'm going to provide you thousands of dollars of free value. Just those are my only two asks. If you could please like the video and hit subscribe, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And we'll get right into it. Speak to you soon. What's going on, guys? Welcome to today's video. So what we're going to be discussing is we're going to discuss how to choose a high-level niche. So this is video two of 10 in the free high-ticket e-commerce mini course that I'm putting out on YouTube. Um, I've built over the last year, shortly over a year now, so I started last September. I've built my store to over $3.7 million in sales with lots of trial, error, and very expensive mistakes. So hoping to save you uh, from going through those same mistakes and um, still achieving the same end result. So I'm um, just going to review quickly what we covered in the last video, and I'm going to plug that video below here. It'll just say video one with the link to it, and then I will get right into today's content. I'm just keeping it super lean, simple, and actionable so you can... Um, get the most value for uh, the least amount of time. So at this point, after the last video, you should have incorporated a business. You should have set up a business phone number using open phone or another provider. You should have set up your business address, virtual address, uh, and your, <clears throat> your general business address at your uh, corporate address. Set up a business banking account, a business credit card, and review the P&L sheet that I linked to track your expenses. So what we're going to do today is um, kind of pick the theme, the high level niche of your store. And we'll actually discuss what that is. But just before we get going, we'll also link, I put together this list of 100 product types that I think would be good to get started. I put that below. Um, there'll be a link that you can go access that just to get some ideas going if you'd like. Other than that, I think we're good to get started. So high level niche. So what is this? So in e-commerce, the argument is always, do I do a general store or do I do a niche store? So the problem with general stores is that you sell unrelated products. So you could sell a canoe and a stroller on the same store. It just doesn't make sense. And it gives your user a bad experience. So that's why it's not good to do that. But the benefit of a general store is you have endless things that you can sell and you have endless suppliers that you can contact. So you can, you'll can you never run out of good products to sell because they're literally endless. You can sell anything. Um, but that said, your user will not have a good experience. Your website conversion rate will go down, um, which is why people then say you need a niche store. So that would be something you only sell one thing and you dial in on that thing and you are an expert in that thing and everything that you do is tailored around that product in your ideal customer avatar. So let's say you're selling the canoe. Your person would be likely an outdoors person in the in middle age and very passionate about like survival and camping and all that stuff. So you could tailor all of your advertising, all of your blog posts, everything towards that person. And your conversion rate would be very high because if you're only directing your ads towards those people and only those people are going to your website and you're only selling stuff that they like, you're going to have a very high conversion rate. The issue is you can only sell canoes. So you can only sell this one product type and you're extremely limited. Um, so what I've kind of made up in my head is a way to kind of bridge the gap between those is the concept of a high level niche. So what that means is you want to kind of have the best of both worlds. So rather than just sell canoes, we want to sell related products under a broad theme that that ideal avatar. So your person who likes canoes, something that they, a whole bunch of products that they would like. So rather than just selling canoes, maybe you sell canoes, tents, kayaks, paddle boats, maybe hunting equipment, maybe um, survival gear, like water packs. I don't know, like a whole bunch of different things. So then what you do is you have all of these product types I recommend above 10 under this concept of a high level niche. And then what you can then do is you still have endless suppliers. You have all kinds of product types to sell from all kinds of different suppliers, but your store is themed around this ideal person, this ideal avatar. So if they buy a canoe from you today, in two months from now, they might, and you, assuming you provide them a great experience and they're happy um, with their purchase and with, with your service level and things like that, Maybe in two months from now, they're looking for a tent and they go back to you. So then you can increase your lifetime value. So you, not only will you get more customers because you're selling more products, you will increase the lifetime value of every customer that you do have because you have more to offer them. And you do not struggle with the downside of a general store where you're selling like completely unrelated things and your customer doesn't know what's going on. So it's really the best of both worlds. 
Um, so that's the concept of a high level niche. Um, I will also link this sheet below. So then once you go on the sheet, what you want to do <clears throat> is I recommend thinking of over 10 of these broad level categories. So the one that I just provided you was kind of like an outdoorsy survival um, type store. So what we would do then is we would put here outdoor survival. So that would be this hypothetical stores theme. And we want to think of 15 of those. So maybe one is cooking. So you could have grills, appliances, um, microwaves, fridges, um, pizza ovens, espresso machines, etc. So you want to think of, of these higher level categories using the theme of a high level niche. You want to think of roughly 15 of those. And I'm just going to show you like what you would then do to do the market research. So we want to think of as many, so here we would put outdoor slash survival. And then what we want to do is think of as many product types above a thousand dollar price point in that niche as possible. So canoe, kayak, maybe like certain tents, um, sleeping bags, rock climbing equipment. What else does this kind of person like? Boats, tr inflatable boats, life jackets, sets, boat trailers. Um, hunting equipment, hunting gear. So those camo suits, gun cases. So we just want to find as many things as possible. Our ideal avatar, like I want you to in in detail visualize this person. Like who are they? Who's this person who likes all this stuff? And then what other stuff do they like? We want to find as many high ticket items as we can. So ideally over a $1,000 price point, um, we want to get as many as we can. So just for time, I'm not going to go do this all, but say if we get 25, we want at least 10 to have above a $1,000 price point. However many you have, um, at least tents. So canoes would be, kayaks would be, tents, maybe, sleeping bags, maybe like the super, super cold ones. If you bought like a set, could be, but I'll say no. Depends what it is. Yes. I would guess like if you got five or six, it would be. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. So you want to get 10 that are yes, not strict. So if you have like eight that are yes and like, seven that are maybe, then that's fine. So what we want to do is when we're going the brand loyalty, like what we want to think is, okay, when you're going to buy an iPhone, you are buying it because it's Apple. When you're buying headphones, you're buying them because they're Beats. You're buying them because they're Bose. You want to think like of products that you do not care what brand you get. You just want the best product. So even you might even know the brand. So to give you an example, if you're buying a grill or a barbecue, you might know the brand Napoleon. Like that's that's a popular brand. But let's say like the person at the store told you, oh no, like this other brand is new and it's really, really good. It's better. I think you'll like it more. You would probably be open to it. Like you're not attached mentally to Napoleon the way you would be attached to Apple. So we want to have products in here that people are not attached to the brand. So they, they're open to new items. So even if you know the brand, even if there's like leading suppliers in the space, you just want to have product types that people are not going to buy it because it's a certain brand. So like John Deere, we wouldn't want that. Like people love John Deere. I uh, just to give you an example. So here, like it's usually going to be the same across the board. You might have like some in here that like, I don't know, like maybe rock climbing stuff, like maybe Patagonia. I, I, I actually don't know. But maybe there would be, but I think overall, like it's not going to be an issue. And what we want to do is we want to type in buy canoe like that. And we want to go to Google Shopping and we want to see how many stores are selling canoes. So it looks here like, and then we want to sort by above a thousand. Actually, sorry, min. And we can see quite a few, which isn't always a bad thing. So I want you to think of competition and demand on an inverse related scale. So the more comp competitive something is, 
the more demand there's going to be for it. The less competitive something is, it's probably because there's not a lot of demand for it. And what I want you to understand is that you can have a competitive niche such as canoes. Like let's say there's there's 50 stores selling canoes. So it's competitive space overall. But let's say there's 100 brands of canoes in North America. Let's say 95 of those are on most of these stores. So you're going to face competition for those 95 brands. But then say five are new. Five of the canoe brands are only available in five stores. You can then sell those canoe brands and not face competition because competition occurs on the brand level. So if you're buying, like in the example of cell phones, like cell phones are a competitive space. But if, if Apple comes out with a brand new cell phone that's only available in one store, everyone's going to buy from that store and they're not going to face competition, even though cell phones are competitive. So just have understanding of that, that don't be afraid of competition. It's about one, how would you market it? How well your store looks and is targeted to your ideal avatar. But more importantly, it's about the products you're selling. Like if, if the products you're selling are only available in your store and a couple other stores, you won't face competition no matter how com competitive the niche overall is. Just keep that in mind. So I would say overall, it's like medium to high competition, but that's not honestly important. Uniqueness, this is just kind of a subjective gut test. So um, just kind of for your own knowledge, like canoes, I would say it's like kind of unique, like kayak, medium, tents, medium, sleeping bags, medium. Like common stuff would be like a grill, a couch, like where I would say no, but like a lot of this stuff is somewhat unique. Like I wouldn't really know where to go find these online. And then what we want to do is after we fill that out, so I would just say like overall, Unique, that seems unique to me. We just want most of these to be like a little bit unique. Like it's, again, it's not like a hard and fast. If you have this many yeses or this many noes, just like overall, is this like somewhat of unique space that like isn't couches? Like I would not want you to sell couches just cause it's so like generic and boring almost. Okay. And then what we want to do is you'll have a free trial on tools like this. So like Ahrefs or Moz.com or, or something like that. And we want to just type in these words and make sure you're in the US market. So when I type in canoe, I can see I'm in the United States. Um, see, it's quite seasonal. That would be a worry with the niche, this niche, but we want to put in 126K. So anything over about 20 or 30 is high. And then um, we just want to put in these terms and just get an assessment of what, oh man, 2.1 million, that's crazy. Just get an assessment of the general demand. So if you had like 10 products here and like majority of them were under 50K or under 20K, I would be worried about demand. But if you have like 10 and you're getting like super high numbers like this, like let's even see boat trailer. Like that seems kind of like a weird thing to buy, 13K. And what this is, is month, monthly searches over the previous 12 months. Again, like one thing I'm worrying about this store is it does look a bit seasonal. So um, one thing with seasonal stores is I always recommend having something that's inversely correlated. So if you're selling um, these, I'm guessing it's peaking in the summer. Yes, it is. So we would want to then think, how can we pair this out? What's this ideal outdoor avatar guy or girl looking for in the winter? So I would guess maybe snowshoes. And we see like it's peaking at the opposite time. See? So that would actually be something that would make sense to have here. Snowshoes. I don't know what they are. That seems unique to me. Competition. We'd have to check. I just don't want to take forever on the video. So 32K. And then what we want to do is if we're seeing a bunch of seasonal items, we want to just find things that like everyone says, oh, don't sell seasonal stuff. No, just find what your person, your ideal avatar. So instead of building around a product, you're building around an avatar person. So what is that person looking for in the other months? Snowshoes, probably, if I had to guess. And it looks like it is. So then we would just sell some other products inversely correlated with the main ones. So once we fill that column out, we'll have all this done. And then what I want you to do is then go to the stores that you found for the competition section. So buy canoe online. 
and I want you to find the drop shipping stores. So how you do that is the easiest way that I found is just find a store with like the name of the product type in it. <laughs> so let me see here. I would guess that Minnesota Canoes may be a drop shipping store, but we'll be able to tell when I go on it. Yes, like I would say almost for sure. And if you want to make sure, go to the bottom. If you don't see an address, then you can be even more sure. So they have a showroom. That's like they can go to About Us and look if they have a showroom. So they do have a showroom, but again, just because they have a showroom doesn't mean they're not drop shipping. They could have like a showroom in Minnesota but sell all over the U.S. I'll just find another one. So Fun Outdoors. I almost guarantee you that this one is a drop shipping store. Fun Outdoors. Just like these weird, catchy store. Yeah, 100% is a drop shipping store. So then what you want to do, I recommend, is go to the chat and write, Hey, I am interested in this product. Make sure it's over $1,000. I am interested in this. Can you give me a discount? One of your competitors did. I'm not gonna wait, but put in like a, you put in your email, you can put in a fake email, it doesn't really matter. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a 10% discount at a minimum. So let's say what, what, we're, what we're going for here is high margin products. We don't wanna waste our time. I did so much of this, it's terrible. You do not wanna sell things that have like a 15% margin. It's just a waste of time. Like if you make a ten thousand dollars sale, one thousand five hundred, you probably spend a thousand of that on. You make five hundred bucks in a ten thousand dollars sale. Don't waste your time. Sell stuff that is only like above twenty to twenty-five. I would say twenty-five or higher. I don't advertise anything below twenty-five. I, I list stuff around twenty fifteen, but I don't push any ads to it. So if I make the sale, it's just like oh nice, like I didn't spend anything to acquire that customer. So what we want to do is go into each of these product types, and we want to get a discount. And we want to get as big a discount as we can. I always ask for ten percent. If you can get someone to give you a 10% discount, that usually signifies they have at least 25 to 30% margin because if they're spending five to 10 on ads, that would bring them down to 20 to 20. So 25 to 30%, if they spend five on ads, it's 20 to 25. And if they're giving you 10, they then are only making 10 to 15, which is a, no one's gonna give you more than that. Like if they're only, if they're only, mar, if they only have like a 15% margin, they're not gonna give you 10% off. So that's why I recommend doing that. Do that for each of those product types and do that for as many as you want. I recommend to my students to do over 10. It is very tedious, but you will get to know the market and you'll get to know how to do product research better than anywhere else, any, any way else than doing this. Like if you put like a week into this, you'll know inside and out how to get, how to find good products, not only for this business model, but kind of anything. So I highly recommend you do it. Um, and we covered all these. So high price points, over a thousand dollars. Competition doesn't really matter, but we want to see, I guess, just, I wanted to just point out the fact that like you can have competitive niche, but not a competitive product. Just depends um, on like how many stores it's available on. Uniqueness and demand. So demand is an important one. We want to check that. And then we want to find 10 sub product types within that niche. So here we did all these. We want to find above 10 of those and then um, do that for a few different niches and then you can kind of just once you do all these think to yourself like what seems to make the most sense based on the research you've done how much how many discounts you're getting like what do you what can you assume the margin is based on this how much demand are you seeing is it unique is there a ton of competition is there brand loyalty get a holistic view and then just I don't know maybe like rate it to yourself at a 10 how good do you think it is and then do that for like 10 to 15 different categories and then pick one and there's not a right or wrong. Like people will agonize over this for days and weeks. It's like, no, like any one of them, if they pass, if they have all this criteria will work. It's just, you need to just start. What will make you fail is not starting. So just start with one. And if you need to pivot down the road, you can pivot, but it doesn't really matter. The most important thing is you just do this research, get the information you need, trust your gut, trust yourself, and just follow what one makes sense to you and get started. But that's all I really have for this video. Again, I'm probably releasing what other people charge you thousands and thousands of dollars for in, uh, in this mini course. So the only price I ask is if you could please just hit like, please hit subscribe. 
below, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I very much appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video, uh, number three, where we're actually going to find, well, we'll, we will discuss how to find individual suppliers that you'll actually reach out to contact to list on your store. Again, thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and we'll try soon. Bye.